Hello some people, hope you are all doing great. Today I'm going to demonstrate you how you can make an external callout from Salesforce to an external web service. So it's an Apex REST callout, all right? We'll be, what we'll be doing, we'll be making a request from a Salesforce org to an external web service. The web service will check the request and verify it based on the past API key and give us uh, process the request and give us a response and we will show that response in our salesforce org all right for the web service i will be using a site name country layer so they provide free data for the country okay you can search by all the countries or you can give any country name it will give the detailed information of that country and I have already signed up in, a, in this site. So you can just sign up the free version, okay? The free version will be all right. Uh, if I click in the login, you see I have already signed up. And this is my API key to make the call out to this country layer site. And if I go to the dashboard, sorry, if I go to the documentation here, you can see the all the requests I can make, I can, uh, search for all the countries I can search country by name search by capital so in this demonstration I'll be showing the country search by name so if I select it so here is the configuration how we can actually make the request or call out to this endpoint all right so let's dive in to the main implementation uh, before going to the implementation of the code I need to do uh, the setup of the remote site setting you have to always remember before making a call out to an external site we have to define the URL of the external site to your remote site settings so from setup you have to write remote site settings click on it and click on the new remote sites and I will just name it uh, their country all right and the url should be this one i will be copying it and paste it in here but here's a limitation i'm using the free version of the country layer i assume uh, watching this demonstration you will be also using the free version so in the free version the https encryption is unsupported so i have to remove the s from here it's all right for the demonstration purpose but i extremely recommend it recommend it that you always use the HTTPS uh, API callout uh, for your project or any uh, client project or anything which is in the tutorial based or your experimental based work all right so I have to save it so I have successfully created a remote site setting okay now I have to go to the developer console and create a new apex class I will name the class as country layer okay this is my apex class and I have to uh, make a apex method I can name it public static boy make call out I'll be taking a string country name as a parameter just let me uh, surround it with the try catch block exceptionally this is the boilerplate so I have saved it successfully first of all what I need to do I need to create a uh, initialize a HTTP HTTP object and new HTTP because the apex rest callout are always uh, HTTP based that's why I have to initialize it and after that I have to initialize HTTP request request I can name it just request equals to as new HTTP request all right and I need to set the endpoint for that request let me just fix that indentation I think the indentation is a bit weird okay endpoint request dot set endpoint the endpoint means the uh, URL the end URL the uh, callout will be hitting to in the server right I'm fixing this envoy later on and request dot set method 
So we will be fetching data from the external web service. That means our method should be get method, right? And lastly, we need to just set timeout. It's not mandatory. You can set timeout for uh, like uh, uh, one one lakh and twenty thousand millisecond, I guess, uh, highest. That means the it's one hundred and twenty second. So I'll be putting it to the highest portion. It's actually depends on your implementation and uh, how quickly the web service process your data. It depends on this. Okay. So we have uh, created the uh, necessary information here, but we need to define the endpoint. Okay. Let me go and uh, let me just declare a string endpoint equals to this one will be our endpoint, right? Uh, the full text won't be needed. We need to copy, copy till here, copy it. it it's a string. Paste it in here. Let me format it. Okay. The name, the name should be the country name. We will be passing the country name while calling this apex method. A country name plus and it will be another string there was a question mark and we have to put api key let me go to my dashboard and copy the api key and paste it in here okay let me save it if there's any issue okay uh, just showing some problem did i miss anything country yeah i actually put the plus inside Okay, there's still the problem exists. No, the, it it gone out. So what I did, I defined the endpoint for that API callout. All right, and I'm getting the I will be getting the country name from the calling method. All right, and passing it in here. It will be dynamic, and the access key equals to the this one. When you sign up for an account. You will be copying paste your key because after the tutorial I reset it so that you can't use my API key. All right. So um, and another thing, the good practice is to uh, hide the API key or hold the API key in custom metadata or custom setting, so that if the one of your API key is um, not working or any problem, you can just uh, change it from the custom metadata or custom setting. You don't need to go to the code and manually update it. For the sake of the tutorial and for going through quickly, I'm just putting it here, not in the custom metadata. All right. So you can just uh, Google the best practices to API callout for Apex, something like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, make initialize HTTP response response equals HTTP dot send request which I declared before. Uh, what I'm doing here, I'm finally sending the request, the API request finally, and um, I will be holding it on the HTTP response. Okay. And if response dot get status, sorry, status code to 200 the 200 means the response code is okay we will be system dog debugging the response dot get body uh, it's actually fetches the response and from the JSON format okay so what I did I initialized HTTP response and kept the request uh, requested uh, response data in the response variable and if the response dot get status code, that means the response was executed successfully, then we are system debugging it. And one more thing, I previously said you that there's the HTTPS isn't supported for the free version, so I have to remove the HTTPS. The S is removed. I'm control sing so that it's saved, and now I can actually call it out. Okay, I have written it. Make get call out make call out and I'll be putting the name as Russia Bevel does not exist country layer call out okay let me update it if 
by debug only. So voila, you can see that I have successfully made a call out to an external web service. You can see I have uh, put Russia as parameter and the full name is Russian Federation. The top level domain is .ru and the relevant information are visible in here. All right. So our main purpose is done, but I will be showing a bit more thing how we, we can get a specific data from this uh, from this uh, response. This is a JSON response. Here you can see there's a uh, second break, third bracket in here is starting, and there's also another in the ending uh, which is not visible in here because we are system debugging a very long data. So firstly, I have to remove this third bracket. If there was no third bracket, I didn't need to remove it. Since it's here, I need to remove it from response. Uh, how I can remove it? I will just declare a string, okay, and response dot response response dot get body dot sub sub string sub string one. Uh, one means the first one response dot get body dot length ngth minus one all right and control s so what i'm actually doing in here um uh, removing the first and the last length minus one last character from the response that means i'm removing the third bracket from here from the response all right so now i can actually map it into a string string and object the map name can be response map equals to map of string object and json dot i have to deserialize it deserializing the payload okay what i actually did here you can see from the response here it's a string and here you can see object here you can see object object so i'm putting uh, the payload the payload is uh, the removed removed result of the uh, response json response right so i'm removing sorry i'm putting it on the string to object map and uh, in the process i'm deserializing using the json dot deserialized un untyped it's actually apex by default feature so after that suppose i'm wanting to get a specific value from here let me see which one let's say i want to uh, get the alt spellings okay this one i have to copy it and here you can see uh, there's a list of a list of data in here so to get the alt spelling from the uh, from this response map what i can do <coughs> excuse me list of string sorry list of object there i showed you that list of object i can i can just name it so something and the list of object response dot sorry that was response map dot get all the spellings and i will be system dot debugging Okay, so I showed you that they are as object inside the all spelling. So this is a list of object. That's why I am declared the list of object, and I'm getting the <coughs> all spelling. Excuse me, um, all spellings, uh, string, value. Here you can see the all all spelling, all spelling. So and putting it, putting the result in a list of object, and then system dividing the list. So Control S asterisk is still visible so it's saving uh, it is very slow i guess yeah it's saved successfully now if i once i can call it out let's go to debug okay voila we have successfully got a, a specific value you can see here the odd spelling are you russia russian federation we got it specifically in here so this is how we can uh, access uh, specific data from our API response and I can also change the country name to Canada if I call it again debug only 
here you can see it's only CA the all displaying is only CA here, here you can see all displaying is CA all right so I think this is pretty much it from me for today uh, I have shown you how you can actually make a call out to an external web service uh, via Apex REST callout in Salesforce and in future I'll be bringing on how we can actually process this data more efficiently and use this data all right and if you have any confusions or any questions or any recommendation or anything you can just comment it below and till then uh, goodbye from me take care